Hallelujah. Acts chapter 4. Acts chapter 4. My God, I got, I got to read. Got to read this thing or, I, or we going to stay right here. Woo, Jesus. Somebody shout, I love you, Lord. And I love your word. Say, I love you, Lord. And I love your word. Acts chapter 4. My God. Ooh, a sweet spirit in this place. And I'm glad about it. <laughs> Tell somebody, and I'm glad about it. <laughs> I'm glad about it. I get joy in his presence. I'm glad about it. Acts chapter 4. Ooh, hallelujah. Now, I'm reading from the New King James Version. Now, as they spoke to the people, the priest... So now as they, speaking of Peter and John, as they spoke to the people, then the priest, the captain of the temple, the Sadducee and the Sadducees came upon them, being greatly disturbed that they taught the people and preached in Jesus the resurrection from the dead. And they laid hands on them and put them in custody until the next day for it was already evening verse 4 however many somebody shout many, many of those who heard the word believed and the number of the men came to about 5,000 for time's sake let me just push on if you could turn to to verse 18 and it says, so they called them and commanded them not to speak nor to teach in the name of Jesus. But Peter and John answered and said to them, whether it is right in the sight of God to listen to you more than to God, you judge. <laughs> and the text, for we cannot but speak the things which we have seen and heard. For we cannot but speak the things which we have seen and heard. I, I just want to talk to you for a few minutes. If you could just tell your neighbor, I can't stop now. Come on, tell her like you mean it. I can't stop now. I, I, I've seen too much. I've already heard too much, Sister Jasmine. I can't stop now. You can ask me to do quite a few things and I might oblige you, but for this, I can't stop now. Heavenly Father, we know you're about to have your way in this place. Move how you want to move. We say show off, God. Do what you do. Bless your man's servant one more time to rightly, I said rightly divide your word of truth because it's your word that helps me through. It's your word that lifts me up. It's your word that helps me to overcome everything I'm facing. So help me to rightly divide your word of truth. In Jesus' matchless name we pray. Amen and amen. You may be seated, but shout one good time. I can't stop now. I can't stop now, Deaconess Spady. I, I can't stop now. I may be tired, but I can't stop now. I've come too far. I've seen too much. I can't stop now. Hallelujah. You, I, I, I can't give up now. I've come too far from where I started from. Nobody told me that the road would be easy, but I don't believe he brought me this far to leave me. I can't stop now. I can't stop now. I, I got to move, but I, I can't stop now. Now, as we think about this topic, there's many things in our life that we do need to stop. Are you hearing me? You see, some of us have tried to stop many things, Elder Rasheem. Some we, 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 we need to stop it. We need to cut out some habits that we have in our life. We, matter of fact, we need to stop right now. Paul say, said, lay aside every weight and sin. 
weight in sin. There some things we got to stop right now. We, we've got to stop it. We've got to stop all the bitterness. We've got to stop all the complaining. we got to stop all the backbiting. we we got to stop all the gossiping. Those things we've got to stop now. We've got to stop procrastinating. We, we got to stop that right now. We, there's some things we have to stop. But there's some things. There's some things that we just can't give up. There's some things that I just can't stop doing. It, it means too much to me to stop now. Like someone in their fourth year of college, when, it, when uh, just a couple months before they graduate, it would be silly for them to stop now. They, they've already made it this far. You can't stop now. A, a woman who, who, who was in labor and had all those pains and, and they're coming up on the last week, they can't stop now. They've already been through too much. They've already went down this course. It's too late to turn back now. We can't stop now, it, it, uh, I, when I was studying, the, the Lord laid it on my heart to really, really study the book of Acts for the whole month, at least. I don't know how long he's going to have me here, but, 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 but I don't know what he's doing, but I, I'm expecting some great and mighty things. And as you see in the book of Acts, you see the church was on the move. You see that they were doing great and mighty works. And, and now as the summer has come down to an end and I've got my relaxation in and stuff, I believe God wants to use us to do a great and mighty work in our lives. So this whole month I'm going to be studying the book of Acts to see what God did in the early church because somebody shout he can do it again. Come on shout it he can do it again what he's done before he can do it again. If he healed before he can do it again. If he showed signs and wonders before he can do it again. So we can't stop now can't stop now. God is ready to do some great things in your life. There, there are three things that I'm praying that, that you can truly declare with me as we move forward walking in victory. And number one, that is, I can't stop walking in obedience. I said, I can't stop walking in obedience. I refuse to stop walking in obedience. Whatever comes my way, I just can't do it. When we look at the text, it says, now as they spoke to the people, as they spoke to the people, this is Peter and John, because they were doing exactly what the Lord told them to do. Many of us are waiting for God to do a great and mighty work, but we refuse to go and do what he's already told us to do. He told you to go left and, and, and your miracle and your deliverance is in you going left, but you're standing still waiting for him to bring it to you. But no, we see Peter and John, they're moving forward doing what God had told them to do. God told them, I'm, when the Holy Spirit come upon you, I want you to go preaching the gospel. I want you to go out ministering to him so that everybody can hear the gospel. So now we see here in verse 1, they're doing what God told them to do. And what I, I want you to understand about obedience does not mean everything is going to be easy. Because obedience, when you're walking in obedience, it will bring the naysayers. When you're walking in obedience, it will bring the haters. When you're doing exactly what God told you to do, it will bring people to come against you. It, it will bring people to speak negatively of you, to, that, that your good will be even spoken of. Uh, but, but, but you've got to walk in obedience anyway. I'm not letting nobody stop me from doing what God has called me to do. So they're in the act of doing exactly what God has called them to do. They are speaking to the people. They're spreading the message of who Jesus is and what he's done. But, but, but now we see the naysayers. Isn't it amazing how, how many people come out and when they're not doing what God called them to do, but they want to criticize everything that you're doing for God. <laughs> you found it so, Pastor? 
I found, I found it so that, that, that people who sit and still not doing everything always has a word of criticism for the people who are actually doing things. <laughs> and, and it's not just in the church. Oh, we see it a whole lot in the church, but even on your job or, or even if you tell somebody, well, I'm starting my business. Oh, but you don't have this. You don't have that. Oh, oh well, I'm going to travel here. Why? Your budget's not good enough. They're always criticizing you, even though you're walking in what you believe God has called you to do. So now as they spoke, now the haters and the naysayers are showing up. Even when walking in obedience, they're going to be right there. So it says the priest, but not only the priest, now the, the captain of the temple and the Sadducees, they, they came to them. <laughs> and being greatly disturbed, so now they're mad. They're greatly disturbed greatly disturbed that they taught the people and preached in Jesus the resurrection from the dead because oftentimes your obedience can get you in trouble with man these are people of authority that are showing up on the scene these are people who have have the power to to make their lives uncomfortable the people who have the power to shift um, how their life is going it, it but I'd rather have favor with God than favor with man you see many of us have that backwards we're we're searching we're we're, we're looking for favor with man instead of favor with God I rather have favor with God and yes God will give you favor with man when you need it but I just need favor with God I want to please him I walk want to walk in obedience for him they were greatly disturbed. Have anybody ever got mad at you for your obedience? Because you're faithful? They say, you got to go to church every Sunday? You got to always pray before we eat? <laughs> you mean to tell me you can't just skip it just to come watch the game? You know, it is football Sunday, they, you know, the first, first week. You can't just skip it. This is special. No, they they want to criticize you when you're walking in obedience. But I'd rather have favor with God than favor with man. Verse 3 says, and they laid hands on them. And I'm not talking. They, they didn't lay hands on them to pray. They didn't pull out anointing oil to lay hands on them. That's not what the scripture is saying. But, but they took him aggressively and they arrested him. They arrested him with, without any trial, without any true cause. They arrested him until, and kept him in custody until the next day for it was already evening. That did kind of throw me off a little bit because it didn't seem to bother them when they were arresting Jesus. They, uh, yes, it was against the law to have these trials at night, but, but yet they did it with our Savior, Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. But this time they at least obeyed the law and they let them stay in jail for the evening. And so he stayed in custody there. Your obedience can get you in trouble with man. Is that all right, though? Are you willing to put up with whatever trouble, uh, trouble you could get in when you don't want to compromise on the job? But, but even if they're your authority, but you still say, no, I, if I got to lose my job, that's all right. But I can't stop walking in obedience. I, I can't stop. I can't stop. I can't stop now. So these people, they're walk, Peter and John, they're walking in obedience, doing what Jesus had told them to do, but yet they find themselves in jail. Have you been there where you, you might not have been in jail, but you did what Jesus said do, but then you find yourself going through suffering and going through pain. You, you, you search the scriptures to see what they say you should do, and you followed it to a T, but yet you end up in a spot where you are in trouble with man. Even though they're walking in obedience, they're still in jail. Even though they're doing what God said, they, 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 they're arrested and put in custody for the evening. But I'm so glad that your obedience, it always, somebody shout always, it always leads to productivity. 
it always leads to productivity. I don't care how it looks. I don't care how it feels. If you obey God, God, you will come out on top. If you obey God, he will honor your obedience. I, I've read somewhere obedience is even better than sacrifice. He will honor your obedience. How do I know that? So in this case, because verse four says, however, somebody shout however. However, many of those who heard the word they believed. You, you see, the haters, they showed up too late. They showed up too late because once the word goes out, it cannot return to our father void. It can't return to him void. So you might get in trouble on the job for sharing the gospel, but it's too late. I already got it out. You may get in trouble at within your family because they're tired of you talking about it, but it's too late. I already got the word out. And if you could just get the word out and let God handle the rest, let the Holy Spirit do a work in that person. You take whatever charges that come against you, but you've got to get the word out. They believed what they heard. They believed what they had heard. They didn't just hear it, but they believed it. We see their obedience led to much pro productivity. It says 5,000 men. Five that from from speaking the gospel, from telling what Jesus did, five thousand men. And if you know anything about scripture, you know when they say that, uh, um, it's probably was around twenty thousand plus that were there because they didn't include the women and children. Y'all remember when he fed the five thousand, right? Uh, it was, but they only counted men. But it was men, women, and children, and they believed. Your obedience, it will lead to productivity. So that's why you can't stop now. So somebody say, I can't stop walking in obedience. I can't, I can't, I can't stop. They refuse to stop walking in obedience. But then we see the next thing. We, they, uh, uh, this is number two, I can't stop defending my faith. I've always got to be ready to give a reason for the hope that I have. I've always got to be ready to, to say why I'm, I, I serve the God that I serve, why I believe what I believe. I, I may not know the book frontward to backwards, but I'm going to tell you what I believe and why I believe it. I, I may not be able to quote so many scriptures, but I'll tell you what I believe. I, I'll tell you what he did in my life. I, I'll tell you what I've seen and what I've heard. I can't stop defending my faith. Some of us Christians, we've got to grow a backbone. We, we've, got, we've got to be able to stand up. We, so many of us, we, we, we want to just go through life so easy. And at the end, he say, job well done. But, but no, I want to be like Paul. I want to say, I fought the good fight. I, want to, I fought the good fight of faith. I, I was able to defend the faith. And when we move on, it says, and it came to pass on the next day. The next day. So they let him stay in jail overnight. And now all the rulers, all the elders, all, all the scribes, they, they, they came in, as well as Annas, the high priest, and, and Caiaphas. They, they all came in, John and Alexander. And then the scripture had the nerve to say, and a number of people from the family came as well, the high priest. They were all gathered there because the men refused to, to stop walking in obedience. They got all this attention and all this backlash because they said, I can't stop walking in obedience. See, some of us, we can walk in obedience until we get some backlash. We, we, we can share with others uh, until somebody challenges us. Then, then all of a sudden, we, we, we can't defend our faith. But I can't stop defending my faith. And so they all came together. And, and, and when they had set them in the midst, they asked them, by what power? By what power and by what name have you done this? So if you know what previously happened, uh, Elder Rashim actually taught, taught on it a few weeks ago. And, and we see that they, they had healed the man at the gate. 
Y'all remember that when they said I had silver and gold have I none but such as I have, right? Y'all remember that. So they, they healed and it was on the Sabbath. And they healed the man. So, so word got around that they were doing healing. So now they're saying, by what power and what name have you done this? How did you do this? Because they had other people with gifts and stuff who can do some of these magic type stuff. So they're saying, how did you do it? They're not even mad that it was done, but how did you do this? By what power and by what name? <laughs> oh, there's power in his name. <laughs> There's power in his name. But, but we see here, th this is tricky because if you, if you read it in the Gospels, you might be wondering, what is he going to say next? Because you remember, we've heard Peter confess his love before. We've heard Peter uh, uh, talk about how he wouldn't deny him. But then we, when we saw his back up against the wall, we saw he denied him. But, but, but so now we have to wonder, how is he going to respond to these questions? You, you have the authority all around me. You have people who can really do damage to my life. You have people sitting in front of you who can take your life. How is he going to respond? I'm, and I'm so glad we find out in verse 8 because it says, then Peter... That same one who denied him, the, the same one who start cursing like a sailor to try to convince that he had nothing to do with Jesus, uh, that same Peter uh, now gives a different answer. And you might ask, well, what changed? What changed? What changed? Well, verse 8 tells us because now Peter filled with the Holy Ghost. Uh, is there anybody filled with the Holy Ghost? Uh, I'm about to run around in this place. Uh, but the Holy Ghost is what makes the difference. Uh, uh, when I look at the day of Pentecost, uh, 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 yeah, yeah, the tongues, they, they excite me. And, and, and what they did in the language and stuff, it excites me. But the biggest difference we see is how they were given power to be witnesses. The difference was the Holy Spirit was filled in him. Somebody say the Holy Spirit makes the difference. Uh, is there anybody in here who, who is thankful that they are full of the Holy Ghost? Uh, did anybody come this morning just to say feel me again? Uh, feel me again. Uh, here's my cup Lord. Uh, oh it's not just the song truly. Lord here's my cup. I, I lift it up. Come and quench the thirsting of my souls. I need to be filled. Uh, somebody shout fill me up. Uh, fill me up huh? come on say it like you mean it fill me up huh? fill me up till I overflow huh? fill me up until there's none of me left huh? fill me up to where I forgive when I don't even want to forgive huh? fill me up to where I love the unlovable fill me up where I don't mind facing consequences from men fill me up till I overflow huh? I want to run over I want to run over I want to run over huh? many of y'all y'all looking for great and mighty works uh, but you have no power now uh, but bishop told us we've got some power we've got some power I, I, I was this close to asking instead of me preaching can I just replay what he taught on Wednesday because there's something about talking about the power of God uh, I left Bible study feeling like I could leap over walls uh, feeling like I could slay any giant that came in my way there's something about the power Power of God. Some of y'all, y'all said the sinner's prayer, but have you been filled? I want to be filled where the Holy Ghost controls my actions, where the Holy Ghost leads and he guides me. I want to be so filled that even when I try to do wrong, something within me says, no, you can't do it. You've got to walk in obedience. Somebody say, feel me again. Feel me again. Fill me again. I want to be filled with the Holy Ghost. Peter now filled. And I don't want to be filled just so I can walk around saying I'm filled. I, I want to be filled so I can do the work that he's called me to do. I can't do what he called me to do without the power of the Holy Ghost within me. Holy Ghost makes the difference. You, you need the Holy Ghost. So now he's filled with the Spirit, so now he can answer. <laughs> now he can answer this question because now, now he's not worried about what man can do to him. 
He's not worried about whatever consequences that are about to come his way. When you're filled with the Holy Ghost, you have that boldness that you taught us about. When you're filled with the Holy Ghost, uh, you'll rather please God than please man. Fill me up. Fill me up. So being filled with the Holy Ghost, listen to how they greet them. I love true men and women of God. They could tell people off <laughs> without saying a cuss word. <laughs> they have the art of telling people off without even raising their voice. <laughs> Y'all remember when the boy said, oh, King Nebuchadnezzar, oh, King. <laughs> I'm not trying to offend you. Live forever. <laughs> See, some of us, we go in the flesh. We go in the flesh. You, you might be saying the right things, but your motives are all wrong. You, 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 you're going because you want to show off how much power you have or you want to show off what you can do. But, but you're saying the right things, but I want to have the right motives. I, I want to be led by the Holy Ghost. And, and when he leads you, just listen how he said. He said, rulers of the people and elders of Israel. If we this day are judged for a good deed, a good deed that we've done to the helpless man. It wasn't even selfish reasons. They didn't get anything out of it. They, they were simply doing it out of good motives to a helpless man. If, if we have done this good deed, by what means he has been made well? So they're confirming that it was a miracle through uh, what Jesus did through them. He says, let it be known to all. <laughs> Let it be known to all, not, not just all you leaders, but let it be known to all. Let it be known to all of Israel, my answer. My answer is, it was done by the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth. Just, just in case there are other people who had that name, it's Jesus Christ of Nazareth. And then, and, okay. so he answered the question, right? He could have left it there. He, he's still walking in obedience. He's still defending the faith uh, because he answered, you asked by what name it was done and I told you it was Jesus. Uh, but then he took it a step further, elders. He, he took it further. There's something about when you're filled with the Holy Ghost, you, you have this boldness in you where you don't stop there. Uh, not only am I giving you the answer, but, but let, 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 me, let me go a little little deeper can I go a little deeper not only was it Jesus Christ of Nazareth but just in case you don't know who I'm talking about it is the same one that you crucified he, this is how he's talking to the leaders it's the same one that you crucified yes I, I, I you know he had to be filled with the Holy Ghost to be able to talk like this uh, yeah we, I, got, I got the respect out of the way but now let me answer a question it was you who crucified him uh, so I've done it in that name but not only did you crucify him but it's the same Jesus that God uh, raised him uh, from the dead uh, by whom this man stands here this wasn't done because Peter was what was so powerful this wasn't done uh, because he had some type of magic but it was by this man named Jesus uh, whom you crucified somebody shout this power in his name uh, there's power in his name his name it makes the difference but he didn't stop there he said just 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 in case you you still don't get it this is the stone which was rejected by you builders oh my gosh he, he's looking them right in the face saying this is the same one that you rejected uh, which has become the chief cornerstone and then he made it very clear. Ah, there is no salvation in any other name. For there is no other name under heaven given among men by which you must be saved. Ah, you need to start defending your faith. I know it comes across as being narrow-minded. Yes, I'm narrow-minded. I can only preach what I know to be the truth. I know you believe it could be found in Hare Krishna. I know you believe it can be found in Buddha. I know some of you believe it could be found in good works. But my Bible tells me that there's only one name that you can be saved. There is no 
salvation in any other name. Uh, I, I'm sorry if it offends you, but I can only speak what I know to be the truth. Uh, and I got enough Holy Ghost in me that I speak it to anybody. I, I speak it if it costs my life. I, I speak it if it if it costs my job. I speak it if it costs every relationship in my life. But I only know of one name, uh, and his name is Jesus. Uh, I said his name is Jesus. Somebody ought to shout his name. Jesus. Uh, Jesus. Uh, Jesus. Uh, Jesus. Uh, some of y'all don't be saying his name enough, uh, but you ought to be saying his name every chance you get. It's Jesus. Uh, why do you walk the way you do, Sister Katie? It's nobody but Jesus. Uh, how in the world are you making it, Elder Shields? It's nobody but Jesus. How come you haven't thrown in the towel? It's only because of Jesus. It's not because only because I got a good upbringing. It's not only because I come to church on Sundays. It's not only because I serve, but it's because of his name, Jesus. Somebody shout Jesus. Hallelujah. Oh, I feel you in this place. Uh, oh, I feel you in this place, Holy Ghost. Thank you, Jesus. You asked the question, now I gave you the answer. It's Jesus. Time out for giving other people credit for what Jesus did. Sure, yeah, you had a nice upbringing, so you didn't go down this path, but it's still because of Jesus. Sure, you stayed away from certain habits that other people fell victim to, but, but it wasn't just because I was trying to stay in shape for sports, but no, it was because of Jesus. Hallelujah. Thank God for the medicines that I took, but my healing, it came from Jesus. I, I thank you for your apology, but my, your, my forgiveness didn't come simply because you apologize, but it's because of Jesus. I, uh, stop giving credit uh, to, to your therapist and your counselor. God bless them and thank you for them. But, but, but I'm in my right mind because of Jesus. Somebody shout his name, Jesus. I can't stop. I can't stop defending my faith. I can't stop. I can't stop. How many know when you walk in obedience and you and defend your faith, they will take notice. They will take notice. They've got to take notice. They, 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 certainly some people must have been in the background, is this the same one that denied them? <laughs> Isn't it some people could pull up your past like I don't know what. <laughs> in a heartbeat. <laughs> I'm trying not to go there on the cave. I'm trying not to go there. But, but one, one of my friends or somebody I know sent, <laughs> sent a, a, a picture out. And on the picture, it said, you know, the greatest archaeologists are women. Because they love digging up the past. <laughs> I, I ain't going to say who said it, but <laughs> I ain't going to. <laughs> you said that's the truth over there Elder? <laughs> but certainly they they looked and said ain't, ain't this the one who was nowhere to be found when Jesus needed him the most has anyone ever done that to you where you say well no I can't do this or that they said hey what, what you did it with me last, last month but now I'm filled with the Holy Ghost. <laughs> wait, 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 what do you mean stop telling jokes like that that's too crude? You used to listen to it all the time, but, but now I got the Holy Ghost. <laughs> right, now I'm filled. Because when you're filled, you can't talk the same. <laughs> when you're filled, you can't go the same places you used to go. <laughs> Uh, can I talk to some field people in here? When, when you're filled, you, you walk differently. When, 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 when you feel some things you don't even let bother you anymore. When you're filled with the Holy Ghost, 
There's some things you don't do anymore, so bring it up if you want. I'm sure Peter would have said if he heard it, yes, and he forgave me for that. <laughs> yes, and he forgave me for that. So we, we need to start getting in the habit. Yes, I did it. I'm guilty as charged, but he forgave me for that. You, you right, you right, I did it. Oh, I was a mess. Oh, man, I did whatever my flesh wanted to do, but he forgave me for that. And now I'm filled. <laughs> and now I'm filled. You see, some of y'all can't say it because you've been saying you're filled with it, but you're still acting the same. You're, you're saying you're filled with it, but you still talk the same. You're, you're saying you're filled with it, but you have bitterness all in your heart. You're saying you're committed, but we can't see you serving anywhere. You're saying in one thing but not the other but Peter he knew he was filled and so he didn't care what anybody had to say he didn't couch it and say well I'm about to answer this but but because of my past y'all might not believe me no he spoke with boldness because he was filled somebody say fill me again and you only need to be filled again if you actually put into work what he put in you. You, you see, a lot of times when we come here, some of y'all are still full from last Sunday because you did absolutely no work uh, in the whole week. You didn't tell one person about how good God is. Uh, you didn't testify to anybody all week. You didn't help somebody. You didn't give them godly counsel all week. You didn't check up on a brother or a sister all week. You're still full. You haven't put anything in the practice but those of us who who are not hearers only but we're doers as well as well sometimes we need to just say fill me again lord uh, fill me up hallelujah glory be to god I'm, I'm trying to move here but but i want you to see that they took notice they took notice the the truth it, it, the truth it testifies against your enemies that's why I read all that, that, that it be, be because the truth, it, it, it offends them. The truth, it convicts them. Some people mad at you because you're walking in obedience. And so when they see you doing it, it testifies against them not doing it. <laughs> when they see you serving, even though you got a million reasons why you can't serve, but you serve anyway, it convicts those who always find excuses not to do something. When they see you pulling down strongholds and they actually have the same access to the, to the power that you use, but they continue to stay bound, it testifies against them. The truth, it offends, it offends your enemy. But I can't stop defending my faith. <laughs> I can't. I can't stop defending my faith. And I can't stop walking in obedience. But, but, but the third thing, I can't stop doing my, fulfilling my purpose regardless of the threats that come against me. Some of us, we, we can do our purpose as long as there's no adversity. We can be faithful as long as there's no storms. We can do what God called us to do as long as everybody is cheering me on and patting me on my back. But, but, but no, you've got to get to the point that regardless of any threat against you, you're going to fulfill the purpose that God had for you to fulfill. Verse 13 says, now when, when they saw the boldness of Peter and John and perceived that they were uneducated and untrained men, they marveled. They marveled at the boldness that they were showing. They, they marveled at the fact that, that they were walking in obedience despite uh, what was coming up against them and despite angering those in authority. They, they marveled at the boldness in which Peter spoke to them. And then they realized that they had been with Jesus. Can anybody in your circle realize that you've been with Jesus? Can people that you work with, can they, can they realize you've been with Jesus? I'm not saying been at church. I, I said been with Jesus. Uh, you can go to church every day if you want and your life not change. That's not being with Jesus. You, you can shout all day. You can dance. You, you can run around, but that's not being with Jesus. Have you been with 
Jesus. Somebody ought to take notice that you have been with Jesus. And not just saved folks, but the unsaved ought to say, man, they've been with Jesus. They, they might, that might not be their vocabulary, but they say, man, something is different about her. They, uh, how is everybody in the office going crazy, but yet uh, she's so calm and she has a sweet spirit about her? How in the world can he get treated like that and he take it so well? They must have been with Jesus. They marvel, they, they recognize that they've been with Jesus. I don't care about the threats that come my way. I'm going to do what God said do. And seeing the man who had been healed standing with them. So the evidence was right there with them. <laughs> the evidence is right there with Peter. The, the evidence that, that the miracle has done. That, that's what I love about how God does things that even your haters can't deny the work that God is doing. <laughs> uh, they can't deny it. They, they might argue about different things, but they say, I, you know, I don't agree with you, but you are different. You're not the same that you used to be. The old things have passed away. Behold, all things have become new. There's something different about you. There's some evidence. Does anybody have evidence uh, that they've been with Jesus? Uh, uh, does anybody have evidence? Does anybody have proof uh, that they are in a relationship with Jesus? Can anybody testify around you that, that yes, they have been with Jesus. They admit the evidence that's right there. We, we, we can't do anything. The evidence is right here. So then they told him, they said, look, y'all, y'all, they put him outside now. Oh, we got to talk about this. This is what the authority is saying. We, we've got to talk about this. We, we can't have them doing this. We, we've got to tell them they've got to stop. They come up with a conclusion to forbid them to speak in this name. Forbid them. You, you could go out, you can build whatever churches you want. You can fill, you can pack it out. You can have concerts. You can have food giveaways. You can do whatever you want, but don't preach in his name. Mm, you can go out, you can preach from the mountaintop, but don't do it in his name anymore. You can even go around healing people but don't do it in that name. Don't, don't do it. it. It says, but then uh, it says, what shall we do with these men? For indeed the miracle was there. But so that it doesn't spread among the people, let us severely threaten them. Let's threaten them. Let's exercise our power over them and, and, and give a severe threat so that they will not speak in this name any longer. This has always been the plan. This is why they paid off the, the soldiers at the tomb to come up with stories that, 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 that he didn't rise from the dead. They, they paid these men handsomely to go and tell lies because they did not want this to spread. They don't mind the, the crowds hearing about healing and stuff. Just not in that name how many can say no matter what you threaten me with i said no matter what you threaten with me if you tell me i'm gonna lose my job i i can't stop i can't stop has anybody come to that conclusion that i can't stop no matter what the threat is over my life i've got to fulfill the purpose that god has for me He said, but Peter and John answered and said to them, <laughs> whether it is right in the sight of God to listen to you. Now you tell me, you tell me, they, like, tell me if this makes sense. Should I listen to you or should I listen to this great God that we just talked about raising him from the dead, the miracle, the evidence in the room of the miracle? You tell me. You be the judge. Y'all the authority. You tell me. Who should I listen to? Y'all laughing, but y'all need to be saying this to some of the people who trying to get you off course, who trying to pull you from your purpose. You ought to say, listen, uh, should I listen to you who's barely making it, or should I listen to the one who owns it all? 
Should I listen to you who you have struggles in your body, but or should I listen to the one who's already healed my body? Uh, you who can't even control your kids, but you want to control me, uh, or should I listen to my heavenly father? You tell me, you, you tell me I'm not doing enough. Okay, well, scripture says I should be doing even more, that if I had 10,000 tongues, I couldn't praise them enough. You tell me I praise too loud. Should I listen to you, or should I listen to this great God? Should I listen to you who do have power at the job and you can actually get me fired should I listen to you or should I listen to the one who owns it all should I listen to the one that gave you the authority that you do have which one should I listen to you've got to be careful who you're listening to uh, he, he tells them plainly you tell me you be the judge. You're so smart. You're so educated. You, you already talked about how uneducated I am, but you, 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 you're the smart one. You tell me, which one should I listen to? And then we come to our text. <laughs> Uh, to, to tell somebody we're there now we're there now we're we finally made it to verse 20 so so being filled with the Holy Ghost he he responded and he said for we cannot we cannot we will not stop somebody shout I can't stop now somebody shout I can't stop now I I can't stop now and I'm closing but but I want you to be able to say these things I can't stop walking in obedience I can't stop defending my faith I cannot stop doing my purpose even in the facing the threats and I can't stop calling his name I can't stop calling his name I I, I know I know I might get locked up for it I know I know you might throw me in the dungeon I know you might even and throw me in a, a den full of lions. I know you might do that. You have the power to do that, but I still can't stop. I, I, I know, I know, I know it's going to make my life harder, but I can't stop. I, I can't stop calling his name, Elder Rashim. I, I, I just can't do it. I, I thank you for your kind offer that you'll let me go, but, but if I can't go preaching in the name of Jesus, then you might as well keep me bound here. Uh, some of us need to have that type of boldness, that, that, that if you're going to lock me up for preaching Jesus, that's all right. Go ahead, lock me up. Uh, we'll have a new life, open Bible in the A block, in the prison, what, whatever it may be, uh, but I can't stop preaching his name. Uh, I said I can't stop. I I won't stop. I, I don't care what the threat is. I don't care if you say you have to close down the church, then I'll start a church on the street corner, but I can't stop calling his name. Why? Because it's in his name that we get salvation. Why can't I stop? Because it's in his name why our prayers get answers. He says if you ask anything in my name, uh, then your, answer, your prayers will be answered. I can't stop. Uh, threaten me if you want, but I won't stop. Uh, I can't stop calling his name uh, because it's in his name that we have the victory. Uh, in the name of Jesus, uh, in the name of Jesus, we have the victory. Uh, I want to walk in victory. Do you want to walk in victory? Then you've got to use his name. Uh, there's no victory in anybody else's name, but he's the one that causes us to triumph uh, you want to walk triumphantly then use his name uh, somebody ought to shout his name Jesus uh, Jesus uh, Jesus if I can't preach in his name uh, then I can't preach about how he was hung on the old rugged cross uh, but my whole faith depends on it uh, my salvation depends on it uh, if he didn't die for me then I'm yet in my sins uh, if he didn't die for me then what I'm doing right now the Bible calls it foolishness uh, if he didn't die for me then I don't care how many church services you have uh, it does no good uh, but it's in his name uh, in his name I've got power uh, in his name I got victory uh, in his name I got hope uh, 
and a future. It's in his name. That's why I will call upon the Lord uh, for he is worthy to be praised. Uh, can anybody call on the name of the Lord? Uh, can anybody give him some glory in this place? Uh, I know you got mask on, but you ought to still say, I can't stop uh, and I won't stop. Uh, I can't stop praising him. I can't stop uh, because it's in his name they say, that he said if you lift up the name uh, that's when I'll do the drawing uh, I'll draw all men unto me thank you for your flyers uh, thank you for your word of mouth but all you got to do is lift his name uh, it's in his name uh, somebody shout it's in his name uh, it's in his name uh, it's in his name uh, I can't stop praising his name I just can't stop praising his name. I might get on your nerves. I might get on your nerves, but I can't stop praising him. You say I'm doing too much, but I can't stop praising him. You talk about me and say I look foolish. I don't care. I can't stop praising him. And I want the devil to know there's nothing he can do to get me to stop praising her. Because some of y'all are so bold when it comes to other men and other women. But I will you all to be bold enough to tell the devil whatever you try against me you can't stop me either I know my week was rough but I still can't stop praising his name I know I'm going through right now but I can't stop praising her do I have anybody in here who says they can't stop praising her I can't stop giving you glory I can't stop waving my hands I stop leaping for joy I've seen too much I've heard too much I can't stop somebody praise his name somebody lift him up somebody exalt the name of Jesus he, he's exalted in my life he's exalted in this church he is exalted I lift him high I don't care what you say I can't stop now I refuse to stop now I've got to proclaim his name it's in his name I have forgiveness it, it's in his name that I get my strength it's in his name Woo. Jesus 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 uh, some of y'all when y'all get in trouble and don't know what to say just start saying Jesus 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 I I don't know how I'm gonna make it through this storm but Jesus 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 in fact the more you talk about me the more I call his name Jesus 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 the more storms that the devil puts in my life the more I call his name Jesus 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 anybody ever call on the name of the Lord and found that he is a, a strong tower where the righteous can run in and be safe why are you in your right mind Tim because Jesus because Jesus I will proclaim his name Jesus Jesus oh wow I love his name Jesus they said I can't stop I can't stop now cannot speak the things which we have seen and heard I've seen it with my own eyes and I've heard it <laughs> I've seen it and I've heard it uh, have you seen God do mighty things uh, come on have you truly seen it uh, have you witnessed what he's done uh, uh, you can't get mad at me I'm just telling you what I've seen I'm just telling you what I heard why why are you getting so mad I'm telling you what he did in my life see some of us don't even have a testimony that they share with people ah uh, let me help you whatever your background is just say I once was lost but now I'm found I, I've experienced it. I'm glad it says seen it because some of us we've only just heard it 
We've only heard about it in church. We've only heard about it from our saved grandma. But, but no, how many have an actual experience with this great God that I'm talking about? Then you can't help but share what God has done in your life. Somebody shout Jesus. I've seen it, I've seen it, I've seen it. And I've got to go. I'm about to pray and, and, and send you home. But what I love is they say, I've seen and I've heard. You know why that gets me so excited, Elder Rogers? <laughs> because of the scripture that says, eyes have not seen. <laughs> Ears have not heard. Neither has it entered it into the heart of man. So you thought you've seen something already. Look at somebody and say, get ready. Get ready. God is, you haven't seen yet. You think I'm praising him now. Wait till I see what he has planned for me. Wait till he does some more things in my life. Eyes have not seen. Ears have not heard. Neither has it entered into the heart of man. Uh, that's why I praise him like I do. Uh, that's why I live for him like I do. Uh, that's why I sum I'm surrendered like I am. Uh, because I haven't seen anything yet. Uh, I've seen him save me. I've seen him do a work in me. I've seen him take my desires and turn it around. I've seen him do it all. But I still haven't seen what he has in store for me. Uh, he has some great things in store for you and don't wait until you see those but go ahead and bless them right now I believe he's done enough already to get a praise I believe he's done enough for you to confess and declare that I can't stop praising his name somebody ought to recognize that they are unstoppable if you refuse to stop praising his name if you refuse to stop walking in obedience then you are truly unstoppable no sickness can stop me no devil can stop me no chaos can stop me no authority can stop me no lack can stop me no family can stop me my past can't stop me the world systems can't stop me because I've got that great name somebody shout I can't stop Somebody give God a praise in this place. Hallelujah. I can't stop. I, I can't stop. Just can't glory, stop. glory.